<clears throat> All right. Hello, lovies. It is Coach Ange and Life Coach Brady Miles, and we are here with another magic. Um, it has been a busy, uh, busy season for us. Yes, it's it is. It's been kind of crazy. Yes. Um, but we have been keeping gratitude uh, firmly in center while we are um, riding the roller coaster. Yes. <laughs> yes. So today is day 15. We are talking about day magically 15. healing your relationships. And so I'm going to read a little bit about this and then talk um, a little bit about it firsthand and then, you know, how it goes. And we'll ramble on for a bit and then do you want me to read it and then you'll be sure. able to talk about your mom or whatever yeah. yeah okay so if you have a difficult broken relationship are suffering from a broken heart or hold any resentment or blame towards another person for anything you can change it through gratitude gratitude will magically improve any difficult relationship whether that person is a husband or a wife brother or a sister a son or a daughter, a partner, a boss, a business client, work colleague, a mother-in-law or a father-in-law, parent, friend, or a neighbor. When we are faced with a difficult relationship or a, or a challenging situation in a relationship, it is almost all cases we're not in the least bit grateful for that other person. Instead, we're busy blaming the other person for the, problem, the problems that we have with them. And that means that we don't have a shred of gratitude. Blame is never going to make a relationship better. It is never going to make your life better. In fact, the more blame, the worse the relationship gets and the worse your life gets. So I love, I love this, these first couple paragraphs for a couple reasons. Um, I love how it clarifies the definition of relationship. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I coach on the five areas of wellness and one of those areas is relationships people typically assume that means like a spouse or a romantic yep. and that's not the case a relationship is any kind of connection that you have with someone and all of them matter i mean obviously some carry more weight but they all matter and they're all uh, important to be intentional in yep. and so finding gratitude in each of the relationships not just in your spouse is what will make a difference in your whole life because yep. there's so many pieces to our lives mm -hmm. Um, so I love that clarification. And then, you know, just to stop putting blame on everything else. Um, I'm a big fan of the four agreements. And one of them is that nothing is personal. You know, I am only responsible for my thoughts, feelings, and actions. I'm not responsible for yours. No. And you're not responsible for mine. And so, therefore, how I feel is never your fault. No. And instead of me giving away my power and just saying like oh it's all your fault you upset me you made me mad I'm giving away my power no I chose to feel that way and if I don't like it then I need to figure out how to not feel that way yeah. and another thing that I've done too as well y'all and I've learned a lot from this I've learned how to respond and not react oh yeah like before somebody would trigger me and my mouth would just come straight open and it would say whatever it wanted to say and lash out without even looking at the bigger picture of what is going on. So through yeah. coach feel and stuff, I was able to learn how to respond. And the way you learn how to respond is you sit on it. Mm -hmm. Like when somebody pisses me off or upsets me or says something, I sit on it because and and the reason I'm able to do that is because I have gratitude and know and I know as me being a life coach I know it's coming from a deeper place yeah and so what I've learned to do is I sit in it mm -hmm. and man it might be a week later it might be a month later yeah. or two months later but I see where it's benefited from me sitting in it yeah or I'm able to see that they really didn't mean exactly what they said right that it came out wrong right or, like there's so many benefits right. to it's hard yeah. don't get me wrong y'all yeah. it is so hard to hold it in when you really yeah. want to tell somebody something yeah you know but it hurts the relationship and sometimes it's not even worth addressing it's and hard. you realize that a lot of it is just their insecurities or, or your insecurities. Or my, yes, I've learned yeah. in so many positions yeah. that it was my insecurities yeah. and I had to do a check check on myself. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah, or both even. And so that's the difference in reacting <coughs> and responding. And mm -hmm. that's one thing that I learned and I've learned it the hard way. And another thing about that is that it's about you controlling you. Mm -hmm. 
not you controlling anybody else. Mm -hmm. It's you controlling you and your actions and your how you respond to things. Your yes. boundaries. Yes, it's yeah. pretty dope. It's pretty yeah. dope when you finally figure it out and you learn how to do it. Right. Because it took a lot because I had a hot temper. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it's in, in some ways it's hard because you if once you start to acknowledge Triggers. like oh this is my responsibility it's not my fault but it's my responsibility oh. and once you realize that like on the one hand it is empowering because it gives you control over it but on the other hand it's also like well damn that means I have I have to do this work yes. like that means I can't just put it off on you and and point the finger at you I have to I have to actually work on yes. it so yes yeah so uh, it says whether it's a current relationship or a past relationship if you harbor bad feelings toward another person practicing gratitude will eliminate those feelings why would you want to remove your bad feelings about another person Holding on to anger is like grasping a hot coal with the intent of throwing it at someone else. You are the one who gets burned. Gautama Buddha, the founder of Buddhism, said that. Mm -hmm. Bad feelings about another person will burn your life, but gratitude will eliminate them. How many times have you ever heard that somebody didn't like you and you didn't even realize that they didn't like you? Mm -hmm. So all that time that they spent not liking you? You didn't know nothing about didn't it. Didn't do it. Yeah. I don't Daggum bit anything on you, but it was just eating them up. Yeah. Well, that's the same thing as like you letting <clears throat> stuff bother you. Mm -hmm. You know, you're the one that's getting freaking exactly. angry and frustrated. Exactly. And that's why I've come to a place where I just let that shit go. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I feel so much better letting it go. Yeah. And you know, and a yeah. lot of people say, oh, that's just the hippie in you and stuff. And like, no, I've really decided yeah. for my mental health and yours. <laughs> That I let stuff go. <laughs> um, she goes on to just talk about different examples of um, grudges that you can hold, whether it be, you know, father, child, mother, daughter, sibling, um, and then even after death. So, you know, how often have mm, we heard the story of deep. where, you know, uh, a, a, somebody in the relationship died before the other one could make amends or really mm -hmm. get closure. And they closure. stay angry with it mm -hmm. and stuff for the rest of their life. Yeah, and then they're mad at themselves on top of everything else. And they're destroying themselves. Yeah. That other person has already passed on, yeah. and you're, like, physically destroying yeah. yourself for no yeah. reason, you know? Yeah, so I'm skipping all that because I'm just going to give a personal experience mm -hmm. because this one... Really, I didn't think that this was possible, and so mm -hmm. I um, I had a I had a tough childhood, and um, I had a little sister who had a lot of severe disabilities as a result of her dwarfism, and um, I was her caretaker, and my parents were alcoholics, and my dad killed himself, and so on and so forth, and so it's been a tough road, and I and my mom and I have not always had the best relationship, but we ended up in a situation where after my sister passed away that my mom was um, gonna have to live with me and my kids, and I kind of realized that this is what it is. Like, I lost my grandpa, my uncle, my sister all within two years, and just, saw that my mom was the only person I had left and I better figure this out. I had already mm -hmm. tried to address this with her, mm -hmm. but she was not ready, didn't really want to have this conversation. Right. And so I knew that getting closure from her was not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so I just went to work. And this is after I'd already done a ton of work on myself. Mm -hmm. So this is not like... Oh, I just decided I was going to do it, and I did it. Like, obviously, this is a, just a very short summation of a lot of yes, time of and work. energy. Well, a lot of work of you working on yourself. By myself. To first. create that ripple effect. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, to be able to acknowledge the stuff that I needed to kind of put behind me that was from my childhood that I hadn't really let go of without my mom you know being a part of that and did so did a lot of journaling a lot of meditating and you know I now don't have those like triggers with her like I did mm -hmm. you know I used to the smallest thing would just be off yeah. 
And and I'm not that kind of a person in general, but with her, it was a hair trigger. Yeah, because it's something that she grew so up with, and there's so much triggers and stuff yeah. added on to it. Yeah, so, you know, to say that I was able to sit and find gratitude within who she was, accept who she was, who she's always been, and that she did the best she could with what she had at the time, mm -hmm. is what allowed me to really get to where I am. Like... I did that for me. Mm -hmm. And hell yeah, it's benefited her. Yeah. And I'm glad that it has. It's not like I don't want her to benefit from it. Yeah. But I didn't do that for her. I did no. that for me. No, but that's usually what happens when you start working on yourself. <laughs> yeah. It, when you start working on yourself and you start changing yourself and stuff, then that ripple effect happens. And the ripple effect happens to people that are closer to you. Friends, your families, your spouses, your children. You know, and then they see you do what you do, and it's just a ripple effect. It's just like a ripple effect of negativity, you know, but we turned it around to right. a ripple effect of positivity. Right. You yeah. Know? It's amazing. It's amazing. It, so I say all of that to say that it works. Like, it really does. It's not easy. And like I said, this was after me kind of getting my own self into a good place because I wouldn't have been able to do this, you know, five years ago because I wasn't in the place where I needed to be. So, you know, there's also a, a lesson of trusting the process in this as well. Yep. And knowing that you can't put the cart before the horse. Mm, and you got to trust the process. As long as you're making the, making the process, the progress, moving forward, just know that you're getting there. Yep. Because, the, again, this is the... I've been doing this since 2016. Like... And it takes a while. It doesn't happen overnight. I know, but I can tell y'all with my... with <clears throat> and I don't want to go too far into anything, but my relationship with my husband, yeah. you know, of me going to school, like... Just being the, an example. The, the It's just now... It was a whole two years of grinding on myself, mm -hmm. and then the ripple effect started happening with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was great. It starts yeah. with you, though. It starts with you first. Well, because once they see it, then they believe it. Mm -hmm. They're skeptics. Yes. Because they're hurt. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, it's easier. The psychology behind it is just easier to stay there. Um, okay, so for today's magical practice. Who do you want to just do we? this where we just do these two and then yeah. talk about these? Just a few yeah. of these. You and go then we'll, for it. Okay. Uh, the magical practice is not about who is right or wrong. No matter what you feel someone has done to you, no matter what someone said or didn't do, you can magically heal the relationship. You don't need another person in order to heal it. And this is what's awesome. You don't need that other person to heal it. This starts with you. It's you. There is a, there is a gold in every relationship, even the difficult ones. To bring riches to all your relationships and your life, you have to find the gold. As you dig and discover a negative gold, write it down. Address the person by name and express in the sentence of gratitude. So you can say, Paul, I'm grateful for everything you did to try and make our marriage work because 10 years of marriage means you did try. Mm -hmm. That's dope. You know, you know, you've divorced somebody, but you're still having gratitude for that 10 years that y'all really tried to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, another one is Paul I'm grateful to you for our children the joy I received from them every day could not be without you I'll say that I've, I've done this too and not not I've been more I've had to be more intentional with my mom because there's such a history there you yeah. know and it's a it's a much deeper relationship but yeah. you know my relationship I was married for 10 years we have mm -hmm. three kids and and it was not it was a toxic marriage and so but we now co-parent very well together. I have, you know, respect for him as a person. I try to, we, you know, we're friendly. And the other day I was at lunch and my friend, she said, you know, you speak highly of him. And I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, like, whenever you speak of him, just in passing, because I don't spend a lot of time talking about mm -hmm. him, but yeah. in relativity to the kids, she's like, you always, you speak well. And I'm like, well, I'm, I speak honestly. Yeah. And I take pride in that. Like, I don't try to turn him into some sort of, monster like yeah. I speak honestly and I think that, that this this has has made a difference because you know if it wasn't for him I wouldn't have my kids and they're my everything nope. you know and and so I think this is another this is a really great That's example great yep. because this can be the hardest one you know when you well, heal in relationships yeah. any relationships and just yourself within it you know giving forgiving yourself for 
the marriage failing, forgiving yourself for allowing it to happen or, you know, all of those things that we tell ourselves, you know, just to be able to say it was what it was supposed to be at the time. Yeah, I think it's great. It's pretty cool. Let's say, sorry. Okay, no, I love it. I love when you go deep. Okay, so count your blessings. Make a list of 10 <laughs> blessings by writing why you're grateful. Reread your list and at the end of each each blessing you say thank you thank you thank you and feel as grateful for that blessing as you can so that's writing your 10 blessings and what did i always say you can get it out of your chapter these chapters like really tell you your 10 things that you're grateful for each morning when you get up okay the other one is choose one difficult or broken prob problematic or broken relationship that you want to improve so take one person that you want to improve the relationship with Sit down and, and make a written list of 10 things that you're grateful for about that person that you've chosen. Write it down in the following way. The name, I am grateful for what? And then just before you go to bed tonight, hold your magic rock in your hand, one hand, and say the magic words, thank, thank you, you for the best thing that happened for you to you that day. Nice. That is awesome. That's awesome. All, all right, y'all, thank you so much, and we will see you tomorrow for the magic. Peace out.